Welcome back. So, we are going to start the new session and in this session as I discussed in the last uh, session that we were talking about the, we have finished the new classical understanding and now we are moving towards the new topic which is about the, the, uh, the output gap about the monetary policy stand, how the central bank decides about what will be the appropriate rate of uh, policy rate which can be in the form of either increasing or decreasing the policy rate. So, how central bank decides about this thing? Uh, when I mention about, so let me give you the background what we are going to discuss about uh, the monetary policy in today's session in, in this session is about how we can uh, understand the, the role of monetary policy or we can think about what will be the appropriate rate of policy rate. So, in case of India, we have the repo rate and reverse repo rate. Repo rate is the rate at which central bank lends to the commercial banks and the scheduled commercial banks. So, you can think about the lending happening from the central bank to the banks. When banks are having excess liquidity, and they feel that they have excess reserves, excess cash and the central bank also feels that they have excess liquidity in the economy, then it allows the commercial banks to keep money with the central bank. So, central bank will be offering some rate of interest on that. So, that is what we call it the reverse repo rate. Let us first understand about the repo rate because repo rate is always higher than the reverse repo rate and, and repo rate plays very important role. So, in case of India, we have uh, something called the liquidity adjustment facility, so LAF. Under liquidity adjustment fa facility, typically it, it happens that the central bank decides about increasing or decreasing the money supply based on increasing and decreasing the policy rate, uh, re repo and reverse repo and they adjust the liquidity in the economy through these two rates. So, whenever they feel that you have uh, less liquidity in the economy, so they decrease the rate of interest and pump the money through the, the repo rate and whenever they see that there is excess liquidity, then they will be going for either increasing the reverse repo rate. So, reverse repo rate means, means that banks will be incentivized to save or they will be simply increasing other parameters, for example, cash reserve ratio and SLR requirements. But in typical case, the policy rate matters a lot because on this you have the money supply decided. So, if your money supply is moving around the repo rate or the policy rate, then it becomes really important that what will be the, the appropriate rate and which all parameters will determine this rate. When the central bank or RBI, Reserve Bank of India is going to decide about the rate of interest that repo rate which is 4 percent uh, this time. So, if it is going to be 4 percent, then this 4 percent will be based on which all indicators, where which all indicators will play a very important role. That understanding is crucial in the macroeconomic setup and in this particular setup, we will try to understand that which all uh, factors specifically the parameters play uh, important role in deciding about the appropriate policy rate. In case of US, you have the federal fund rate, so maybe we will be having examples from that, but it will be really interesting to see that in real life how it works. The reference book remains same, here the Stephen D. Williamson and we will be also covering the chapter 15, but here we will be also focusing on the Williamson part and also we will be referring the Q book of macroeconomics and there we will be talking about the dynamic system under that you have the quick adjustment in the economy, the short run adjustment. So, New Keynesian School of Economic Thought is more about the New Keynesian idea, right? New Keynesian School of Economic Thought is more about the short run uh, adjustment in equilibrium. So, we will be talking about those things. Otherwise, the objectives remain same, not much change, right? So, here we will be talking about the the uh, condition under which we are discussing this part. So, here we are talking about the Taylor rule. So, John Taylor uh, developed this idea that what will be the appropriate uh, policy, monetary policy rule through which central bank will decide about the appropriate rate about the policy rate. So, 
Taylor rule for monetary policy increase in nominal interest rate when inflation too high normally we one of the main objectives of the the central bank is that it has to go for price stability so when i say about price stability then it implies that the rate of inflation has to be lower most of the countries have gone for inflation targeting mechanism under that they they have certain uh, rule of thumb or certain i would say uh, targets fixed for the central bank so in case of india as per the monetary policy committee they they have decided about 4 plus minus 2 so 4 plus minus 2 that the upper range will be 6% and lower range will be 2% below this it, uh, central bank if it will go then central bank has to react if inflation touches 6% or beyond then central bank will react normally we find that there is direct relationship between the policy rate and inflation so if inflation is going up policy rate will go up if inflation is coming down policy rate will come down so that's the under understanding and here we find that here we have the inflation so, so here what what it means that here if i am talking about r which is the the real rate of interest so here we say that here it is 2.0 plus 1.2 i right minus 1.5 gap so this output gap this this i will be discussing in the subsequent slides in detail but let's understand what is the value of this 1.2 and 1.5 if you have a 1% increase in inflation which is i is the inflation here and a gap is the output gap if you have 1% increase in inflation then the the rate of interest increase by the central bank uh, we will be around uh, 1.2 percent if you have the output gap output gap here we are, we are mentioning about gap this shows about the output gap if output gap is around if if, if uh, our output gap which shows the relationship between the unemployment rate at the equilibrium and how much uh, unemployment rate you have actual so deviation from that or you can say that the actual and potential output with the full capacity how much output an economy can produce and how much it is producing right now so if it is lower then of course it means that you have the slowdown if you are producing higher than the potential then it means that you are utilizing all of the resources your employment and everything will be better so unemployment will reduce so that kind of dimension i am talking about so let's first think about the nominal interest rates if you have a inflation increasing by 1% your nominal interest rate will increase by 1.2 if the output gap increases by 1% your uh, nominal interest rate will have the inverse relationship that it will decrease by 1.5 and these relationships are having very uh, important role in the economy if you have a i inflation zero if you have no output gap your nominal rate of interest will be equivalent to what you have the 2% which is the natural rate of interest so this can be called as the natural rate of interest natural rate of interest at which uh, the rate at which you have the full employment in the economy or, or equilibrium output in the economy so you do not see any deviation so these two variables play a very important role one is the inflation and one is the output gap and if you have a output gap as 0 so 0 multiplied by 1.2 it becomes 0 and 0 multiplied by 1.5 it becomes 0 so these two will be 0 which means that your nominal interest rate is equivalent to the natural rate of interest and this uh, uh, is the ideal scenario but in real life it may not be the same let's talk about how we can understand this so this particular part we are discussing from manq so there we have first start with the basic premise of the taylor rule derivation so this equation is widely popular and being used by the fed reserve for its policy stand on the monetary policy so here here we have a yt which is the output and here you have the natural rate of output and natural rate of output is the rate at which if everything uh, goes well uh, set is paribus then this is the output that the economy will achieve so if everything equals then and if the economy utilizes the resources available in the economy optimally then this is the output that the economy is going to get then here you have the real rate of interest this is what we have the rt 
right and rho here is the natural rate of interest. So, the real rate of interest is this right and here you have the epsilon t and this epsilon t is having uh, some kind of shock. So, this is from demand side. So, demand side in the sense that you have a sudden change in some macroeconomic scenario inflow of capital or something that has created a some, uh, some shock or maybe a unwanted shock has happened in the economy. So, because of that there is decrease in demand. So, this random variable will have both upside and downside capturing in the economy from demand side. So, and mean of this is 0 and variance is 1. So, this is how we go about it. The alpha is greater than 0, so right, and rho is also greater than 0. The rho, rho is important, rho is the natural rate of interest, it is the real interest rate at which in the absence of any shock, the demand for goods and services equals the natural level of output. So, this is what I mentioned at the full employment equilibrium level. So, this is the ideal situation, this should be the rate of interest actually in the economy, but uh, due to deviations uh, either because of this epsilon or because of this alpha, you have some parameters not coming exactly to the natural rate of interest or real rate of interest is not equal. If real rate of interest is equal to natural interest rate, this becomes 0, right, which means that your y t is equal to y t bar and if you are just taking the expectation, then this is also 0. So, this is the ideal situation that if you have a real rate of interest equivalent to rho, which is the natural rate of interest, then you do not have to worry about. The moment you have a deviation, then it matters a lot. So, if r t is greater than rho, then what will be the scenario? If r t is less than rho, then what will be the scenario? But overall, since it is having the inverse relationship between the output and real interest rate, so this is directly linked with what we call it the IS LM scenario that we have already, uh, I think uh, those who have done the macroeconomics one, they, you must be knowing about IS or LM framework, the Hicksian idea. So, there it is linked with uh, uh, this. So, yt is equal to yt bar, the full employment potential output minus alpha rt minus rho plus epsilon t is nothing but the equation of IS curve, the IS line which is downward sloping, inverse relationship between output and interest rate, right. So, here we will be talking about this alpha value will matter a lot that what is the alpha value here we have. So, this is what we measure the interest sensitivity of demand if it is higher then it means that uh, you are having a more sensitive uh, the rate of interest with output if it is lower then it is less sensitive. So, this is what natural rate of interest if you have R t is equal to rho right. So, this will become 0 and then you have y t is equal to y t bar. So, this is the ideal situation for most of the economy. This is the demand shock that I have already mentioned. Let us talk about the rate of interest and here rate of interest will have lot of importance. Uh, here will be, so Fisherian idea uh, works here. So, Fisher equation we know that here you have the real rate of interest, real rate of interest is nothing but uh, you have the the normal rate of interest minus here you have the expected inflation rate. So, if you have the expected inflation rate, it is expected real interest rate playing a role. So, you have R t is equal to I t minus expectation of t pi t plus 1. So, here uh, what is more important is that here we are putting a expectation operator with pi t plus 1, which means that it is talking about you are expecting in current period about future inflation. So, expectation of t pi t plus 1 which means that you are expecting in the current period about future inflation. So, once you have future inflation then that matters a lot. Uh, so, we, it can be also like here we have expectation of t minus 1 pi t. So, r t is equal to i t minus expectation of t minus 1 pi t can also be linked which means that if you are going to think about the real interest rate, then the subtraction of the normal interest rate with inflation, it is the expected, not the actual. So, that means that there is some kind of a stochastic element attached. Increase in price uh, period from t to t plus 1, not known in period t, this is what we have. Increase in price level from t to 2, uh, not known for period t and it is about the expectation. So, expectation is happening in period t about the pi t plus 1. So, Fisher equation what happened that because of this expectation it also become the expected real interest rate. 
So your expected real interest rate is nothing but the nominal interest rate minus the expected inflation that the consumer is expecting in current period about the future inflation. So maybe you can think about the current inflation based on the expectation from the past. So maybe this can be uh, linked with the adoptive expectation scenario. So adoptive expectation will be coming after this. So this is how it works. The second is about the uh, Phillips curve. So Phillips curve is coming from the supply side. So Phillips curve how it works. So here you have the current inflation and here as I told that this is coming from here expectation of t pi t plus 1. So, here you have expectation of t minus 1 pi t here which is nothing but the previously expected inflation. Here we have a phi y t y t minus y bar and this is nothing but your output gap. How much is inflation response when output fluctuates around its natural level. So, this is the natural level of output and this is the actual output how much is the deviation. Natural level of output means the output achieved at the full employment equilibrium and there is no deviation happening. So, this is the most ideal scenario you can see. So, y t bar represents the most ideal output, but in reality in actuality depending upon the rate of interest and certain uh, parameters it may not be the same to achieve the same level of output. So, deviation will attract some change in the policy rate and inflation and this is what we are trying to understand here. And V t is nothing but here we have the supply shock random or so it is having the same like aggregate demand the epsilon that we had assumed. So, it is having the same. The, the phi shows the sensitivity of inflation with respect to output around the natural level which means that when economy is booming your y t will be greater than y t bar which means that here you will have the, uh, the uh, output rises uh, above the natural level which means that this is the natural level output your economy is booming if it is doing good then it will be y t minus y t bar and if the economy is not going up if it is not moving up and if it is in recession then it will be just opposite to this. So, y t minus y bar that we have this will be y t greater than y t bar boom scenario you will have the higher inflation scenario the central bank will also react in the same way. If a y t less than y t bar you have the slowdown in the economy. So, this will create a very favorable scenario for the lowering the interest rate then the central bank will think about reducing the interest rate. So, output gap has lot of importance. Second thing about the output gap it also talks about the unemployment scenarios right. So, unemployment scenario can be linked with your output gap if it is higher if your y t is greater than y t bar then it means that you are creating more output demand of, of goods and services are, are higher and then, then uh, it will also bring more uh, favorable scenario for the economy right. So, we can think from the perspective of unemployment increasing and decreasing. So, there is a very famous uh, law. So, the equation can be linked also with the with the Okun's law that shows the inverse relationship between output and employment. So, if you, y t is greater than y bar unemployment will be lower, if y t is less than y bar unemployment will be higher which means that it is having a, some kind of inverse relationship with a pi t right. So, here y t y t minus uh, y t bar is linked with the uh, with the Okun's law which means that it is also talking about the inverse relationship between output and unemployment. So, output and unemployment will be linked with this. When the economy is booming output rises above its natural level which means that here you have a more employment of labor everyone will be getting wages everyone will be happy unemployment will be lower. So, from such theory perspective also we discuss that if the economy is booming everyone is having good scenario there is not so much increase in the social welfare cost and the social welfare amount is not increasing which means that unemployment insurance benefit if it is not increasing then this creates more matching scenarios which means the firm will be posting vacancies and the individuals will be also getting job. So, if you have y t greater than y t bar then this creates that kind of scenario. So, ultimately we will be having a less of unemployment, but if you have output gap increasing which means that y t is less than y t bar then this is this is creating a more unemployment less matching happening in the economy companies are posting jobs individuals are not applying and at that time if the central bank or the if the government has gone for 
increasing the unemployment insurance then there will be again matching efficiency decreasing and labor market tightness that we discussed in that way. So, this will further uh, decrease the, uh, the output and increase the unemployment. So, the, it is also linked with this. When the output is unemployment is below natural rate and vice versa, so this, this, this is how we mention about. Adopt expectation, this is coming directly from the Fisherian uh, equation. So, here we had the Fisher equation expectation of t pi t uh, plus 1. So, here what we say that expectation of t pi t plus 1 is nothing but pi t which means that the individual's expectation depend upon the individual's future expectation depends upon the immediate uh, past or the current period. So, this is underlying idea behind this adaptive expectation that you are just assimilating the previous period information to predict about the current period or future period to predict uh, or using current information for prediction about the future. So, this is how it link with this. Then here we have the finally the monetary policy rule that we discuss about. So, let us combine everything all the equations if you go for solutions substituting one to another then we finally arrive at this particular equation. So, which is the nominal interest rate it is equivalent to pi t right which is inflation plus rho which is the natural rate of interest plus theta pi pi t minus pi t star plus theta y y t minus y t bar and this particular equation is coming by combining all demand then we had Fisher equation demand for goods and services, then we had Fisher equation, then we had the Phillips curve, then we had the adaptive expectation. So, combining all those we are getting this particular equation and this particular equation talk about the dynamic adjustment because here you have the t plus 1 and t. So, here you have the one period ahead we are talking about when we are expecting in the current period about future right. So, it involves some dynamic uh, or the intertemporal scenario. So, this also speaks about the dynamic system. So, here we have i t is equal to pi t plus rho plus theta uh, pi. Here you have a pi t minus pi t star plus theta y y t minus y t bar. So, this, this is how we uh, say. So, nominal interest rate set each period by the central bank and here you have pi t here we have the rho which is nothing but the natural rate of interest. Now, this pi t star is nothing but the central bank inflation target. So, pi t star here central bank inflation target as I mentioned about that in case of most of the countries about inflation targeting mechanism countries have gone for deciding about the, the normal rate of inflation. So, in case of India as I mentioned as per the MPC it is 4 plus minus 2. So, 4 percent you can understand. So, this is about 4 percent. So, this is decided by the RBI the central bank. Here you have a theta y which is linked with the this is the coefficient attached with the output gap. Theta pi is the coefficient attached with the inflation gap. So, this is what we have the inflation gap right. So, how much inflation is deviating from the central bank target plus how sensitive is the nominal interest rate with the output gap. So, these two parameters theta pi and theta y play very important role. They indicate how much central bank allows the interest rate target to respond to fluctuations in inflation and output. So, here we, which means that uh, with the nominal interest rate which is nothing but the policy rate how this policy rate is sensitive to the inflation gap and the output gap. So, this is how we are how much it is deviating. If we have a pi t equivalent to the policy target rate of the central bank then this will be 0, this pi tau will be 0. So, this it means that it, it's a, it is 0 almost right. Now, here if you do not have any output gap then this will also be 0. So, if this is 0 then this will also be 0. So, in most of the cases what you will have is that your natural rate of interest is nothing but i t minus pi t which means that the equilibrium rate of inflation and the nominal interest rate. Whatever is the difference that will be your natural rate of interest that we always mention. They indicate how much the central bank allows the interest rate target to respond larger the value of theta pi. If theta pi is greater which means that deviation is happening it is much larger 
the more responsive the central bank is to the deviation of inflation from target. So, if it is higher then the central bank will also react by the same way, it is having direct relationship. If it is higher then the central bank will also increase by the same amount. So, if one if the theta pi appears to be 1.2 then 1 percent increase in inflation beyond the the inflation target will read by increase by the size of the theta pi, so 1.2. The larger the value of theta y, the more responsive the central bank is to the deviation of the output from its natural level. So, this is how it and it is also linked with the, the Okun's law that I mentioned that at equilibrium how much you have the employment taking place and how much it plays very important role. So, this is how we talk about. So, for the central bank, whether it is Federal Fund Reserve or the Reserve Bank of India, theta pi and theta y play very important role and these two uh, concepts are really important. So, if you are thinking about i t is equal to pi t plus rho, so here what it mentions if you just try to understand measure how much the central bank adjusts the interest rate when inflation deviates from its target. This output gap you have how much the central bank adjusts the interest rate when output deviates from its natural rate. So, the, this is how we try and understand. So, theta pi will be high relative to theta y if the central bank considers fighting inflation more important than fighting unemployment. So, this is how we can interpret the coefficient. In the real life, in real life scenario this is how it looks like that your inflation the federal fund rate of the US economy it will be around pi plus 2. So, this is the federal fund rate uh, Taylor rule of the federal fund rate uh, that the federal, uh, federal Reserve Bank of US always consider. So, they consider theta pi and theta y as 0.5 both same GDP cap. 2 percent is the cent, uh, federal, bank, federal Reserve Bank target. So, they consider 2 percent which is also the natural uh, rate of interest right. So, nominal uh, federal fund rate target is this right. Now, GDP gap that we they consider by this you can also can, can calculate GDP gap by as I told I think in some sessions that you can take the uh, you can go by filtering mechanism you can take the deviation from the actual. So, any data will have the cyclical and trend if you subtract actual minus uh, actual data if, if you subtract trend from actual data whatever is dual amount that you are going to get that acts as an GDP gap. So, percentage so according to Taylor rule the real central bank's policy rate minus inflation this is what should respond to inflation and gap. So, in case of US economy since it is 2 percent if you have the scenario where pi is also 2 then this becomes 0 we have to only deal with GDP gap. So, if pi is equal to 2 then this will also disappear which means that the central bank will be hovering about the real interest rate around 2 percent. So, th this is how the real federal rate equals 2 percent when inflation is 2 percent and GDP is, uh, is at its natural level. In most of the scenarios in Williamson book what they mention about this is the actual and this is the predicted with the Taylor rule and they see a marginal deviation not much. But yes, in certain situation they do not go for, they do not have the similar kind of uh, kind of trend that we often find. So, th this is how it looks like. So, overall what I hope it is clear that when we are talking about the decision about the policy rate then what all factors are important. First is the demand supply scenario which means that we are talking about the inverse relationship between output and rate of interest. Then we superimpose the condition of the Fisher equation, the real rate of interest will matter. Why real rate of interest will matter? Because individuals who are living in the economy, they will be thinking about how much they gain really from saving in the bank. So, if they are getting above the inflation, it is all good for the central bank. If they are getting less than uh, the inflation, then that is not good and individuals will have doubt about the central bank's credibility about the inflation targeting. So, all the central banks they always uh, think about moving around the Taylor rule or they you know, apply the Taylor idea from this perspective and that is why it is very important to understand the John Taylor idea to at least come out with the 
appropriate policy rate. So, if you want you can refer the Mankey book and also the Taylor and I will be continuing further with recent developments non-conventional in next session. So, I am stopping it here. I hope it has helped you understand uh, the monetary policy context in a much better way. We will be having further discussion in the next session and I am stopping it now. Thank you. Thank you so much for your attention.